this is Sparky Lee's footage. Thank you very much, Sparky Lee. It's possible to do anything that they want. We live in a totally deceptive society. We have Cam B who reckons that they put these masks on, silicone masks, but looking at the footage when you look at it, it just looks like a total, well anyway, I think everybody gets my idea if you're watching my videos, but anything is possible, anything is possible. Anyway, in this video to show you how possible it is, even if they don't use the masks. We're just living in such a deceived place. How do we know that anything, anything is real? Anyway, hope you enjoy the video. Yeah, see? Anyway, there you go. So I strongly suggest that you wake the fuck up. back on it. It was miraculous. But you know the saying, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Go in the highest! figures if I can be in. You can be out? With my disc, it's possible. Was it? You know you need me. Of course you're right. Enjoy the drink. Hey, thought you could leave without saying goodbye. I used to say I lived my life a quarter mile at a time. Nice night for a walk, eh? Nice night for a walk. Wash day tomorrow. Nothing clean, right? Nothing clean. Right. Yeah, hey, I think this guy's a couple cans short of a six-pack. <laughs> Your clothes. Give them to me. Now. You won't be needing any clothes. Prepare for the jump to hyperspace and inform Lord Vader. The original plans for this station are kept there, are they not?
bumps and bumps, but reasonably good. Nothing we can't touch down. But the beauty of the transfer is just the, the speed, you know. I've got two cheeks positioned and on, and the edges are all down pretty good. Just a few little bits to, to tease down after, but generally. You know, the blend off here is great. You know, there's absolutely nothing to give it away, and it's kind of hard, especially on a very thin piece, to get it to go down so flat and by being suspended in the mold it keeps all those edges perfectly flat there we go that wants a a little better than the other side. Again, you could take a lot of time. What I would normally do is I'd have a bit of prosade, which I've allowed to thicken. I would go in and put little dots and little lines. I could add those kind of smoker's lines on the lip, things like that, break it up a bit more. But, you know, it's really, we're just kind of proving the concept here. So, what I'm gonna do is get some color on. Your lens, with so many different focal lengths, how do you choose which one to use? Hello friends, I'm back again. In this video, we're going to examine how different focal lengths affect your picture. As photographers, we buy lenses all the time. Sometimes we buy out of sheer necessity. Sometimes we buy because we'd like to buy it. Sometimes we buy it because your friend and a colleague got a lens, similar lens, so you want to buy that. Sometimes we buy for the sheer pride of owning a new lens. In this episode, what we're going to try and do is we have a series of lenses here, right from 14 mm to 200 mm. Basically, we'll start with a 14 mm, go to 18, 21, 24, 35, 50. Then we'll do an 85, a 105, a 135, and a 200. And uh, we're going to shoot in controlled conditions in the studio using a flash. Uh, we're going to use a Godox uh, 8600B and a parabolic softbox. At the end of the video, we're going to put it all together for you. And by making a small comparison, you will be able to kind of figure out what each lens has done to each image. Okay, now into the process. Um, here is our model, Alex. I had to spend half a day trying to explain to him and convince him to come and stand in front of this camera. He's usually behind the camera most of the time. Anyway, I'm going to use the wide, wide lens first and I'm going to work up. Uh, to 200. Now this is on 14. Okay, the first shot. Okay, that's my 18 mm. Okay, that's my 20 mm. That's 24 with the 35. Okay, 35. 51.4. 85.4. And 
and here I am. That's 105. Then I'm going to shift to 135. And the last shot, which is at 200 mm. In fact, I, do, I will not have to explain anything because, you know, you will be able to see the difference. So that's it. Now onto the computer. Let's look at the first image, which is the 14 mm. Well, I am sure no one, including you, the model and the person who shot the image may not like this very much. It is distorted beyond recognition. Um, let's go to the 18 mm now and you will see a distinct difference. Okay. So next is 20 mm and as you can see the distortion is getting reduced. 24 mm, then the 35 mm and from 50 mm onwards you will start recognizing the person a little better and it is very acceptable now and 85 onwards anything between 35 and 85 is our standard focal length range and 85 upwards is our tele range if the characteristics of the wide angle is to distort an image the essential character of a tele lens is to compress the image so from 50 to 85 you start seeing a compression 105 and at 135 you have really compressed that image and at 135 and 200 there isn't too much of a difference now that you know what each focal length does to your image you have to make a decision depending on the effect that you want to create in your image. So it's hence this video just to guide you or help you make that informed decision in buying your lens, the lens that you really require. So if you like this video and if you think it was helpful, give us a thumbs up, subscribe and share. And if you'd like to get in touch with us and if you have any recommendations, use the comments column and uh, we will be happy to respond to you. And um, till we meet again with another informative video, bye for now. Now is patenting, or Amazon has done it already, they've dropped the patent for this ear recognition technology that scans the user's ear with the, smart, with the smartphone's front facing camera. It will scan your ear to unlock the device when you hold it up. Now. They claim here that the individual's ears are just as unique as a fingerprint. This would enable the technology to accurately identify the ear of the smartphone owner when the device is being held up to it. Now to help sell this... Just to evaluate. First thing that we do when we do the evaluation is we draw a grid over the ear. Second thing we'll do is we will draw intersecting points where the ear crosses the lines. Now, as you can see, there's a shadow inside the ear here. You have to be very careful depending upon the light source, what direction it's coming from. Also, depending upon what film they're using and what the technology was at the time this photograph was taken, you're going to have conditions that will change the look of the edge. A softer edge in the more older photographs a sharper edge in the more modern digital photographs. Now the shadows, you can see this shadow here is being cast from this edge of the ear. So the light source we know is coming from behind the photographer on the right hand side in the direction downward and across the ear. It's casting the shadow. So don't get confused with this shadow being an edge of the ear because it's not. You can see that the edge is right inside here. Now, we'll take this grid and we're going to duplicate it. Now we have two of them now. Same grid, same. Bring it over to this here. Position it. And you can see we match slight difference of the angle of the head throws this one off just slightly but you can see everything else is a match so we know that this is the same ear. Now we'll do it again for the third ear. 
again we have another match. We can see that the landmarks of the ear are consistent, so these ears are from the same person. With these three ears, let's start with the middle one. That ear belongs to Father Coghlan. Now, the second ear belongs to Hitler. The third ear belongs to Kermit Roosevelt. Now, just wait. It gets a whole lot better than just that. Remember Kermit, because we're going to come back to him in a moment. But first I wanted to explain one of the photographs that I just used. The photograph of Father Coughlin. In the examination here, we flipped it. So the ear that you saw was not the right ear for the photograph, because you don't have the same ear on both sides. But what you do have are the landmarks of the ears stay the same, and the landmarks are the genetic markers that make up your ear. They will stay consistent throughout, so you can see the genetic traits passed down from individual to father, son, or mother, daughter, and you can follow that trait. They stay with the bloodline. They change slightly, but the markers will still be there.